We all have this limiting voice in our head that can say, I'm tired, right? I don't want it today. But when you're around an ecosystem of people that have every possible excuse to probably say no, and they say yes, right? it's motivating, it's inspiring. But more than that, it should be aspirational. Right? I call it a soul mirror. Once you step into this gym and you witness the work in here, you don't leave the same. My name is David Vibora. I'm the founder and CEO of the Adaptive Training Foundation here in Carrollton. There's a vast need, not only because we have over 40 million Americans with a physical disability, but also because maybe a doctor diagnosed us that said we'd never walk again. But once we start to get a bunch of people together with an attitude to just try and see what could happen, that's where the magic lies. This is what I want, because now you feel the hip flexor, right? And now your hamstring's an actual gate. More than half of those that we serve are veterans and first responders, but also civilians, people that have had traumatic injury through car accidents, but trauma is always the through line. We call them athletes, adaptive athletes. And that's very, very intentional. The mindset of an athlete is training for a purpose, not just exercise for exercise sake. You can't take someone's pain, but you can hopefully help them avoid some of the narrative that kept them in the suffering. And that to me is what we've built here, right? It's like, hey, come as you are. Don't expect to stay that way. I want you to feel the difference in where it targets between your quad versus the glute and the hamstring. I am a product of Eugene, Oregon. My dad played for the Ducks, was a linebacker there, and football was it for me. Ultimately, I became the last pick in the NFL draft. So 2008, pick 252 for the St. Louis Rams. I ended up becoming a Seattle Seahawk. The last play that I played, just heard, I mean, that internal, audible, everything exploding inside of the shoulder. I thought I was gonna rehab this and come back. Uh, but then there was the drug addiction and this huge downward spiral. My prayer was, like, God, show me that the skills and the attributes that David has as a human, that they matter outside of the game of football. So uh, my wife and I were living in Orange County, and I told her, I said, I think I'm supposed to open a gym and train athletes. And so her family was here in Texas. It was meeting Navy SEAL Clint Bruce. He played linebacker at the Naval Academy in the NFL as well. And through my, at the time I was looking for a building to lease or to buy, and he took me to this warehouse, security company, a um, bunch of vets, most of which weren't you know, traumatically injured. He said, hey, I know you want to start this gym, but why don't you just take my space, the warehouse here for free? I won't charge you as long as you work on my guys. I was training the Staubach family and working with elite athletes that were coming in for their off season. So it was Clint Bruce's 40th birthday party. And in walks Staff Sergeant Travis Mills, a guy without arms and legs, Shot. It was like the hot chick at the bar. Like all my attention went there and I just had to beeline it for him. I, I just said boldly, when was the last time you worked out? I am boldly questioning this man on something that I have no experience working with someone like him. I graduated with a double degree in psychology and communications. I don't even know a single amputee and I'm talking to a quadruple amputee. And in that moment I said, but I'll train you like an athlete. Once I found this passion for these athletes that had been injured, it was just clear to me that that was my heart and everything else was gonna be, I'd have to fake it. Each year we run three of our flagship nine week programs and then we run another three of our condensed week long camps. I think the last class we had almost 200 applications to filter through. Yeah, I love it. Get up there, tall, yeah. Our process is very much like an NFL draft. Who's local, who's not, right? Who's veteran, who's not? But a 16 year old girl and a 60 year old vet, you know, on paper don't seem to have too much in common, but the magic is we get them together. It diffuses this trauma. They're training three days a week in a two hour block. Prior to each session, they're breathing. They're stimulating their nervous system to get them ready and prepared to train. I'm gonna ask you to assess in the body where you feel like you're holding tension, okay? And I want you to let that go. One just big breath in, slow. And let it out. They think they know what full effort is and they've never really touched it. Sometimes people like, you don't know what I've been through. And what I always say is, hey, I, I don't know, but I know that I'm not gonna take that pain from you. And if you're not willing to let it up or give it up, then you're gonna be limited by the definition and identity you find in it. But compassion fatigue, empathy fatigue is a real thing. Let's go! My gift is delivering for people 
and believing in them until they can believe in themselves. But I can't do that at the expense of my own well-being. If I'm gonna preach healthy selfish, then what does mine look like? A lot of this can weigh on us. That's why all of our staff are former college or pro athletes. They realize that they're part of a unit. The nine-week program is about people, elite athlete or not, athlete prior or not, doesn't matter. These are people that we feel like are ready to receive all this life-transforming work. And so afterwards, yes, they have a goal that they have to go and take on. That could be the Paralympic Games for skiing. That could be bodybuilding. That could be triathlons. We're gonna equip you in a way that you have the opportunity to pay it forward. 80% of our trainers now are alumni athletes of our program. I'm gonna be a little emotional on this one. This is, this is church. This is their sanctuary. Like, it is amazing when a couple of people get together who believe they're broken, and then we come in and we shift that paradigm. I was involved in a cheerleading accident back in 2021. Surgeons told my parents I'd never sit up again on my own. But then to come in here and have people believe in you and like say, hey, I know this might be scary, but let's try it. My why is helping people close the gap between who they think they are and who they're called to be. It's completely shifted my headspace, and I know so many people in here as well. It's the cheerleader, the smiling while working out. It comes in handy. These athletes are superheroes to my kids. They have a normal Barbie, they'll rip the hip out. That's the magic. They don't look away from somebody that looks different. So she's helping him stabilize right now, obviously because he doesn't have any leg on this side. So we're working on building a new campus with Dak Prescott. Uh, it'll be a 30,000 square foot facility to include housing on site with a bunch of facilities that now can discover the findings and deploy them outside for a growth model. The new campus will both include DAX guys in the performance side as well as uh, everything that ATF's done on the adaptive side. Cool as can be when Dak Prescott's like, hey, when you're done with those dumbbells, can I use them? You know, my feeling is that this gym is iconic because it's about the people. David may have started it, may have instilled some things, but the torch is to be carried by every individual. My name will fade, but the fruits of this and how it's bearing and positioning people to go out there and be those hope dealers, that's all I care about. I just care about these people going out and being light.